recent facts surfacing about sugar. Sugar is an addictive drug like heroin or nicotine. Now that sounds kind of extreme, doesn't it? Does that sound extreme to anyone? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read some things to you. I'm going to read some information to you, okay? This is the definition of what an addiction is, okay? The substance is taken in a larger amount and for a longer period of time than intended. For example, people who overeat. Persistent desire or repeated unsuccessful attempts to quit. Um, you maybe tried to quit sugar, you maybe tried all those different diets that are out there, the Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and all that junk. A lot of time or activity is spent to obtain, to use, or to recover the substance. Important social, occupational, or recreational activities given up or reduced. For example, people who are overweight or obese, you know, they just they can't function in life as well. They use continue. Oh, the use continues despite knowledge of adverse consequences. <laughs> and then, finally, tolerance. Um, marked increase in amount, marked decrease in effect. You have to keep eating more and more just to feel normal, normal, or so you don't experience withdrawals. And then the withdrawal symptoms. The substance is taking, taken um, to relieve the withdrawal symptoms. I'll put people on some kind of a candida fungal protocol and they'll start getting symptoms of candida because it's cleansing out of their body and they don't like the symptoms so as soon as they feed the fungus again the symptoms go away and that's what they want and you'll always be stuck in that cycle and you'll never heal if you continue to do that that's one of the reasons it's so challenging so here's some scientific findings that show that food can be addictive sugar stimulates the brain's reward centers through the neurotransmitter dopamine exactly like other addictive drugs so sugar stimulates dopamine just like it would be if you took heroin or you took cocaine. Brain scans, like PET scans, shows that high sugar foods work just like heroin, opium, and morphine in the brain. PET scans also show that obese people and drug addicts have lower numbers of dopamine receptors, making them more likely to crave things that boost dopamine. So when your dopamine receptors are gone, you have to eat more and more of the substance or take more and more of the substance to get that same good feeling, that same high feeling. Foods high, foods high in fats and sweets stimulate the release of the body's own opiates. They're chemicals like morphine in the brain. Drugs we use to block the brain's receptors for heroin and morphine also reduce the consumption and preference for sweet, high-fat foods in normal weight eaters. So in other words, Synthetic drugs they're using to block these receptors in the brain, if they're doing it for drugs, cocaine, heroin, something like that, suddenly that person stops craving sugar. Same triggers in the brain. Obese event individuals continue to eat large amounts of unhealthy food despite severe social and personal negative consequences, just like addicts and alcoholics. People who smoke, how many people have smoked and tried to quit smoking? People who, I mean, there's no secrets anymore that if you smoke, eventually you're going to get cancer or heart disease or something. You know, there's no secret to that. But people do it anyway. Why? Because it's such an addictive substance. Animals and humans experience withdrawal when suddenly cut off from sugar, just like addicts detoxing from a drug. And just like drugs, <coughs> after an initial period of enjoyment, the use no longer consumes them to get high, but to feel normal. Perfect example of that is, did any of you see the uh, Super Size Me? I'm sure a lot of you saw that movie. But anyway, if you haven't, it's a guy who ate McDonald's for three meals a day for a month, I think. Is that right? And when he first ate McDonald's, he threw up because it was just gross. I mean, his, his wife's a, like a vegan chef, and he wasn't used to eating that food. So he ate that food, and it made him throw up. Well, as he progressed eating three meals of McDonald's a day, and he ate everything on the menu. He even ate the salads and the fish and, you know, the other things. As he progressed through it, he became addicted to it. 
he felt would feel so miserable that he did not feel good until he ate a Big Mac and fries. Mm -hmm. I know, if you can imagine that. I know, Steve's cringing. <laughs> um, but that's what happens. That's what happens with these addictive substances. And it's done on purpose by the food industry. So, so there's sugar in a Big Mac? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That bun, that's all it is. Oh. 